The symbol of the rainbow has its origins within creationism itself. In Greek mythology, Saturn or Kronos, also known as Father Time, led to the creation of the universe. Kronos was fathered from Uranus, the seven-headed rainbow serpents of the sky, also known as the Ouroboros, and his mother was Gaia, also known as Earth. The rainbow serpent is castrated, leading to the creation of the goddess Aphrodite, and this is a theme which occurs throughout Masonic architecture, which I'll leave a video in the description about the sacred temple, ritualism, and the goddess Aphrodite. In Gnostic teaching, the story of creationism revolves around Sophia and the Pleroma, the primordial substance of the universe. Creationism itself is dubbed the Fall of Sophia. The seven colors of the rainbow are synonymous with Oranos, the Ouroboros, and the Caduceus, the seven days of creation. In Norse myth, the god Heimdall is the guardian of the rainbow bridge separating mortals from the realm of the gods. Heimdall is the watchman and god of perception. Heimdall and the rainbow bridge is represented by the archway and masonry, and Heimdall gave the knowledge of runes to men. Heimdall is the father of mankind and has a son named Karl, or Freeman, which is a reference to the Masonic craft and guilds. Heimdall was born from nine mothers, all representing the nine different worlds of the tree of Yggdrasil, the cosmic world tree. The Wizard of Oz has the most prolific use of rainbow symbolism. Judy Garland was the actress who played Dorothy, and Judy Garland was a victim of sexual abuse by the early entities in Hollywood which were subverting the female organizations within masonry. For more information, I suggest you research Monarch Programming, and there will be a link in the description. I've made an entirely separate video explaining the synchronicity principle and the dark side of Oz, correlating Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album to The Wizard of Oz. Here's how it works. Play The Wizard of Oz from the top and wait for the MGM lion to appear. Immediately following the lion's third roar, start Dark Side of the Moon. Turn the stereo up and the TV down. You'll know if you're in sync if producer Mervyn Leroy's credit hits on the musical transition as follows. Now simply kick back and judge for yourself both the lyrical and musical synchronicity. It should be noted that the symbol of a triangle and a tire hanging from a tree is seen when Dorothy is first introduced. And this is uncanny symbolism of the Oranos and the world tree and the triangle of initiation in Masonic craft. Balanced on the biggest way, raised to us in the grave. I'll tell you the thing that totally blew me away out of all of the coincidences that seem to happen is when great gig in the sky is on and the tornado is whirling the movie took on a completely different feel for me there and coming up we have actually one of the best transitions here as it goes to color uh, money comes up which is the next song As near as I've been able to determine, it's pretty much a cosmic coincidence. There simply weren't the mechanics to do it. We had no, uh, we had no means of, uh, of playing videotapes um, in the in the room at all. I don't think VHS would come along by '72, had it? It doesn't seem like there's a lot of evidence to support that it's intentional, but that that certainly doesn't undermine how how cool it is to sit and, and watch it. The Wizard of Oz novel, written in 1900 as a Masonic parable with Professor Marvel in his checkered black and white pants, representing the Masonic floor and initiation. 
while Dorothy's blue and white checkered dress represent that of the Gnosis of Sophia. The deeper meaning of the Wizard of Oz and the two worlds within it are allegories to the divine feminine and masculine from the union of Gaia and Oranos or the fall of Sophia in Gnosticism. Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz represents a would-be Christian initiated into the female lodges of masonry. The Wicked Witch representing the Gnostic teachings of Sophia, whereas the Good Witch embodies pagan converts to Christianity. This is the Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which transcends both ideologies. Dorothy's ruby slippers represent the blood of Christ, and the Good Witch's wand represents the teachings of the Order of the Eastern Star a Masonic Lodge permissive to women. After all, it was the Wicked Witch of the East that was killed accidentally by Dorothy. As any good Christian knows, it's not enough to simply accept that Christ was crucified and rose again, which is why Dorothy needs the ruby slippers to protect herself from the Wicked Witch of the West. The Yellow Brick Road represents the Golden Mead Hall in Norse myth, or the top of the caduceus, the living word of God in the teachings of Christ. This is why the munchkins, who represent the mortals in the Book of Enoch, as opposed to the giants, Nephilim, and Watchers, tell Dorothy to follow the Yellow Brick Road. In Hollywood, these teachings were subverted in the representation of women by way of the femme fatale. And I've made several videos explaining how the Karam meme relates to these teachings and is a coercion of modern feminism ruining pop culture and entertainment. The phrase fatal is the slogan for the women of the Eastern Star, which stands for fairest among thousands, altogether lovely. There is also the Rainbow Girls Auxiliary Masonic Youth Organization, which I should also mention relates due to the Aphrodite symbolism. The inverted pentagram of the Eastern Star often rubs people the wrong way. The five points represent the five matriarchs within masonry, or the five elements for those of a Wiccan persuasion. Otherwise, the five different phases of the moon itself. The light in this Masonic craft is known as Akasha, or the Sanskrit word for sky, which is a representation of Oranos, the rainbow serpent. You might have heard New Age practitioners and yogis refer to the Akashic records, which is the ancestral memory of these cult teachings, which have been passed down by word of mouth from women. This also relates to the Great White Brotherhood, which does not relate to race, but white magic. These are the teachings of Gnosticism to men within the clandestine cults that emerge from the Theosophical Society. The Akashic or Astral Realm is depicted by Dorothy's near-death experience. After the Vortex Tornado, whereas the Wizard of Oz represents the male Masonic craft and the etheric and the rainbow bridge. This is why the Wizard of Oz and the Emerald City is over the rainbow. If the physical universe is one side of a coin and the astral is the other side, the etheric is the edge of the coin. Contrary to popcorn belief, these male-dominated fraternal organizations were not patriarchal control systems to subvert women. On the contrary, they were the teaching of women who had to carry out their craft in secret and use men as their subordinates. The man behind the curtain has no power at all. Or as Glinda the Good Witch tells Dorothy, she had the power all along. But that will be all for now. As always, check the links in the description, and thank you for your time.